Hello everybody and welcome to the War Room. This one is for the uh, Featherweight Kickboxing Grand Prix Final on One Championship 1X on March 26th. Same card that DJ is fighting Rod Tang, so there's lots of reasons to watch this one. So I I'm doing this because I've been intrigued by this Featherweight tournament. I did a breakdown at the very start. Uh, I, I was very surprised. I some of my picks were way off. Some guys did really well in the tournament and others struggled it was a really interesting one from the very start and as it's played out and now we've got the finalists facing off we've got Chingis Alazov facing Sitichai Sitsong Pinong in the final um they will be fight they will be facing the 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 winner of uh the featherweight fight the featherweight um uh, kickboxing match on the card um which is Superbon against Marat Gregorian anyway there's there's just storylines for days in this one so let's start off at the quarterfinals let's start off there because then we can kind of see where we're at. So we started off, we've got um, Sitachai against Ozken, is, you know, a, a legend against a newcomer to one championship. Enrico Kell against David Kiria. Then on the other side, we've got Alazov against Sami Sana. And then the legend uh, Andy Sauer taking on the the lethal Marat Gregorian. So that was the start of the, of the tournament. The first fight that we get is uh, David Kiria against Enrico Kell, and for me, Kell was one of the one of the people in the tournament I was most excited about because, as you can see, he's an incredibly ag aggressive individual, and he started off fairly well. But then there was a point where Kiria's forward pressure and defense just started to shake Kell a little bit. He wasn't able to do anything to kind of hold him off. Kell's used to bullying people back against the fence and really throwing heavy shots into the body and 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 the head. Kiria was able to withstand a lot of it. And then uh, the reason I picked it out here is because, as you can see, like Enrico Kelly's unloading shots. And what you see is uh, Kiria just throws a big right hook, cracks him across the top of the head. And this, for me, is the point where all of a sudden Enrico Kell looks different because he goes from being aggressive and loose, bang, 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 a couple of shots, and he takes a big bang, and then all of a sudden he, he locks and he looks unstable, and he's backing up, and he takes another big shot, and he looks rocked, and he looks kind of cloudy. And then Kyrgios started to do this lovely thing where he's dragging the hand down, removing the guard for the next punch. We see it, we see uh, Golovkin using this quite a lot. So what you'll see is you'll see Kyrgios reach with the lead hand, and he pulls the glove down. I mean, it, it's it's like it's like the arm of a fruit machine, honestly, because you know it's going to spring back up into place. But if you get the timing right you can hit that shot without there being a guard there. And he used this a few times. And, and once Kel was on the back foot, I mean, he was knocked down here. He gets a standing count. And then there was actually another knockdown, which you're going to see as a slow-mo in, mo in a moment. But look at the aggression where he comes in here. Swarms him. That was the last knockdown. You'll see on the replay, though, the pull-down that I'm talking about. There it is, look. And that's the second time he uses it in the fight with great effect. Bang straight through the guard it's just a it's just such a cheeky little shot and then you can see uh Kel hanging on here trying to keep his balance as he takes another left hook so David Kerrier moves through with a great first round finish uh it thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed that fight really surprised because I actually thought Enrico Kel was going to move through next fight is Chingiz Alazov against Sami Sana again another fight I made the wrong call on because I thought uh I thought Sana was going to be a real problem. But what Chingiz Alazov has shown us in this tournament is that he, he is the most lethal individual in it. I mean, he stopped everybody. Like this was the this was the the opening well minute. I mean, you can see the clock here with 20 seconds in. And what's actually happened here, as he's backed up against the fence, you'll see Alazov step across to his to his right. He goes left hook, right hand, head kick. And he's a little adjustment with his feet. So he steps across. Big dragging power left hook, skips his feet through, replaces right hand, and then stepped for the high kick. Lovely setup. And at that point, there, Sana's backing up. You can see he's on his heels and he's not stable. He's taking shots and he gets backed up to the fence here. He kind of gathers himself for a moment and tries to return with a low kick. Where is it? Oh, there's the kick. And then picks that body shot and just folds him like a deck chair. Look at that and little pause as well because it's an onslaught up to that up to that point. Shots and shots and shots and then he stops. Bang! Just a half second in between. Targets the liver. Here's the opening. Right hand. 
It's a head kick. Catches him right in the temple. You can see him disorientated as he as he moves back, and then chases him down. And then this is the finishing sequence. Throwing wild shots. Throws a high kick. Son is going to return with an inside low kick. Pause from Alazov. Pop right into the midsection. Beautiful. Lovely, lovely shot. So, Chingiz Alazov moves through in the quarterfinals. Next up, we have Sitachai Sitsong Pinong against Typhon Ozkan. So, Typhon was one of my exciting fighters making his debut in one as well. Real aggressive individual, but just couldn't deal with the constant left side attack from Sitachai. And what I've noticed about Sitachai's game, and, and, and I think one of the reasons why he's having so much success in one championship, is because a lot of the guys, a lot of the guys transferring over from Muay Thai into a, into into one championship rules Muay Thai in the circle, they've not quite understand how to adapt their game to use the space. Like most of the time they're either controlling the center and and pushing their opponent back up against the ropes, but then they get them caught in that 90 degree wedge in the corners. But then when it's in a circle, there's no point to draw a conclusion to that movement where you've got them trapped. There's always space to go, unless you've got really good subtle footwork, which you know we do see some fighters do. Rod Tang does it really well, for example. But a lot of the the fighters that I've seen so far, they kind of they kind of ignore the space around them. They ignore the fact that they're in a big circle and they don't utilize that space. But Sitachai is different. Sitachai either pushes forward, and it, it works well because we've got this circle in the center. You can see how he moves based on that circle in the center. So he's either pushing forward, forcing his opponent to move away, and every time they try and step back and slow that down, they're getting attacked from the left side, or he goes the opposite way, which you'll see in his in his next fight, which I'll show you in the semifinals, where he's actually backing up, and he's going the opposite way around the same circle, and they're, they're constantly moving towards his power side. It's, it's a really nice sequence that he uses. And of course, now he's in the final, he's going to be trying to use this against Alazov. But Ozkan just couldn't deal with the constant left side attack. It was left kick to left hand, left knee to left hand, like doubling up on the same side, left hand to left knee, constantly targeting the same the same areas, the, the, the side of the head, the side of the midsection and the, and the, uh, the, the leg. I mean, you know, this is where Sitajai really shows his experience. You know, he's it's kind of strange because in, in Thai terms, he's kind of getting on a bit now. You know, he's 30. He's had loads and loads of fights. He's got a massive amount of experience. He's got wins over the majority of the guys that were in the tournament. One thing that he's lacking, though, is the ability to just crush these guys. And that's where, the good thing is, that's where we see his ability come out. We see his technical skills come out and his, 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 his patience in the long run over the rounds. But his opponent this time around, Alazov, is, is lethal, he's vicious. He's, you know, I mean, you'll see it in the semifinals in a moment. I'm getting ahead of myself a bit here, but I can't help but think that he's going to be it's going to be a long period of time to try and not get caught with something powerful against Alazov. And it is a rematch, but we'll get back into that in a moment. Okay, next up, we've got uh, Marat Gregorian against Andy Sauer. Now, I'm showing you highlights of this because it was a beautiful performance, but it's it's redundant now because Gregorian was removed from the tournament due to COVID. And it kind of worked out well for him, which I'll explain in a moment. But this fight, I mean, Andy Sauer, I've been following martial arts for a long, long time, and I've watched many Andy Sauer fights. He's a He's a great fighter. But he's just, you know, he's just slightly behind the times now. You know, he's a bit further on in his career. And Marat Gregorian is right at the crest of that wave. So lovely combination striking from Marat Gregorian here. He obviously walked away with the second round stoppage in this and he moved through to the next round of the, of the tournament. But then he got COVID and was forced to withdraw. So the way that it's worked out for him now is that he's on this same card, but now he's fighting Super Bon Banchemek for the featherweight title. So regardless, Gregorian might still be there to face the winner of the tournament if he if he's able to beat um, if he's able to, to beat Superbon. The other fight that that happened was Joe Natawat picked up a lovely first round finish here against uh, Dav, uh, Davtian. Um, it was a first round stoppage, ten seconds left in the round, but he stiffed him here. I mean, I actually cut this highlight short because it looked kind of bad him trying to get back to his feet over and over again. I mean, look how stiff his leg goes there. Like, watch his who oh, his lead legs just just stiffened, and he goes. He, he he's trying to gather himself. He's trying to get back to his feet. Like that's some mad power, mad single punch power to to put somebody like on on wobbly legs like that. So 
Hang on a minute, I've got a fight card here. I can use this. Here we go. So, we had Ozcan was beaten, Enrico Kell was beaten, Sami Sain was beaten, and Andy Sau was beaten and retired. So we got Sitachai's move through to the semis. We got David Kiria move through to the semis. Marat Gregorian was removed due to COVID and he was replaced by Joe Natawa, who won the alternate. And then we've got Chingiz Alazov's move through. So the next fight up is Alazov against Joe Natawa. And I was excited for this one because you've got two guys that are big for this division. Big, strong, powerful individuals, both with heavy hands, um, Obviously, you know, both here to kind of spoil the show and, and, and steal the uh, the tournament. Nata, what was just a little bit too hittable for him and a little bit too hittable too early as well. Like you'll see Alazov land this short uppercut in a minute that go that slices right through his guard there. And that's the first knockdown. It's, it's very difficult to see from this angle. But look how he, he comes in real low. He fires his rear hand. You can see his rear hand kind of coming through. And then switches and fires that. You see how he springs off his back foot as well. Bang! Fires that straight through the guard. Lands a couple of other shots, but no, nothing really lands. The hook kind of cuffs him, and then the knee doesn't really hit him either. He goes down from that. Then he's back on his feet, and he gets caught with this wicked counter shot. Oh, there's another knockdown from a teeth. This counter shot is one of the nicest returns I've seen. So watch this. Look at that slip out of the way. So you've got Alazov coming, crashing forward, throwing hooks and swarming, much like he did against Sami Sano, if you remember. He comes forward, it's bang, 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 bang. Whoop! Picks his last shot. And that's what he does here. So he lands a bunch of shots. You'll see Natawa throw that big, wild shot. You can see he leans into it, drops his lead hand, swings that hard, and Alazov is just out of the way. Matrixed it. And then comes straight back in with the counter left. Right as he's exposed. The right hand goes whistling past his shoulder. He rocks back onto his lead leg. So now he's primed this rear leg and his power is going to spring straight back off it and transfer into that left hand. Very, very slick. Like he's he's going to be bigger and he's going to be stronger and he's going to be more powerful than Sitachai. He's going to be lethal in the first round. The question is, can Sitichai use his experience and his and his like veteran knowledge to be able to stay away from these shots or discourage and deter Alazov from throwing his power shots too many times to be able to get him into the next round where he can then start to, you know, wear on him a little bit more, start to outpoint him a bit. So th this is a rematch. Um he lost to Sitichai over um three rounds once. Uh uh, where are we? Oh no, sorry, he's lost to Sitchajai twice. He's lost by a uh, uh, three-round decision and he lost by a TKO in the first. I think he got caught with a knee to the body. Anyway, that was a long time ago. It was 2014. Um, the next one is Sitachai against um, David Kerrier. And what you'll see here is the same kind of process that we saw against Ozcan, but now he's moving away from him. He, because Kerrier, as we saw from the Kel fight, he's not going to back up. He's not going to give you the space. So... If you're fighting David Kirier, you either have to stand your ground and meet force with force, which is what Kel tried to do and didn't do very well, or you have to do what Sitachai does and allow him to move forward and to walk him onto, onto shots to set him up. So this time, you'll see, instead of him instead of him pushing forward, uh, you'll see him moving away. You'll see him kind of like sliding away. And what it forces uh, David Kirier to do is constantly move towards that, that rear side. Like, and he just kind of teases him with the lead hand. So slick, Sitachai. I mean, I would love to be able to listen, I don't speak Thai, but I'd love to be able to understand and listen to the conversations in his head because he's making so many calculations every second of the fight based on years and years of experience, not only fighting the best Muay Thai fighters in Thailand, but also fighting the best kickboxers in the world as well. He's got wins over most of these guys, outpointed them, stopped them, Lovely work with that head kick. And, you know, and he keeps working different targets. He works the inside leg. He works the body. And then he will eventually, you know, switch it up and come right back up to the top of the head. Again, he's making calculations. He's reading his, his opportunities. One of his other signature techniques, which often catches people, he goes knee to punch. Something gets through because you can't block both. And what you notice Kerrier do is he drops his elbows to catch the knee, which leaves his head open for the straight left. 
it's a really nice left side attack. If you had a southpaw fighter in your gym and you wanted to give him a good game, Sitachai's approach to, to southpaw fighting is really great. You can see how seasoned he is and how many times he's beaten orthodox fighters because he just knows how to pick them apart and break them down. He reads their weapons, what's coming back, and he's able to get out of the way of them. That's why he's had, had a career into his 30s. You know, it's, it's, it's unusual for Muay Thai fighters to get into their 30s because usually they're 300 fights in at 25 and they're just kind of a bit beaten up. You can't do that many fights without taking uh, some damage. And what m amazes me about, look at that head kick. What amazes me about Sitachai is that he's had all of these fights, but he's not hes not damaged. He's still sharp, and he's still aggressive and consistent over three rounds. It, it's, it's all about, for me, whether he can deal with that, that raw power and intensity that Alazov brings. Because, yes, it is wild, but it's also calculated. It looks wild because it's ferocious. But in that moment where all of a sudden he stops, that's the calm before the storm. Because something something is coming and he's going to pick his shot. It's either going to be a slip counter or a body shot, or he might set you up for that that head kick. You know, lots and lots of good options for for uh, um, Alazov. It's all about getting it done in the first round, though, because I feel like the longer this fight goes, the more Sitachai finds his way in. The more reads he gets on his opponents, the more he realizes that there's a gap when his opponents defend him. Because look, you can see what you can see what Kiri is doing. I will tell you from experience here, and what I'm watching, very subtle, what I'm watching is that space there between his his uh, the inside of his arm and his and his body, because if he was blocking a head kick, that space would grow, <laughs> but he's not. In his head, he's blocking a body kick. Look how tight he pulls that arm to his midsection. You see how he's braced for the body kick there. Like he's even, you can even see the lat contract. Oh, I can't do it right there. You can even see his, his latissimus dorsi is contracted. He's pulled that arm in to brace for that body shot, which Sitachai throws like it's going to the body. Body, body, body. Flicks it over the top to the side of the head. Body, body, body. Flicks it over the top to the side of the head. I mean, it, we could watch it all day. I love it because, he, you know, he's opened that channel for himself. You know, I was just talking to, to Jimmy about this and, and Canelo doing the same thing where he throws a real deep hook. So he comes around the back of the head and starts forcing their arm to move back to defend. And then he comes in and attacks the front side of the face. You know, when, when you've got the experience that Canelo's got or that Sid has got, and, and when you've got a, a, such an awareness of all the tools that you've got in your arsenal, you're able to play these games with people that have got less experience. And the reality is less experience in this case is 63 fights. <laughs> so... Sitachai is uh, 127 wins, 32 losses, and 5 draws, compared to Chingiz Alazov, who is 58 wins and 5 losses. Now, there are two other things that stand out to me when we compare their records. First of all, it's the height difference. So Sitachai is 5'8", compared to Alazov, who's 5'11 and a half. There is an inch reach advantage for Sitachai, but I don't really feel like that's going to play in a great deal. Of the 150-odd fights that Sitachai has had, he's had 39 knockouts. And of the 63 fights that Alazov has had, he's had 36 knockouts. <laughs> so, yes, a lot less fights, but a lot more damage, a lot more, uh, a lot more power striking, a lot more ability to put people out before the end of the fights. Now, that works in an advantage as well as a disadvantage. The reason that Izzy's such a good kickboxer is because he didn't knock many people out, which means he got loads and loads of rounds of working against guys and, and being a better striker. If you're a big power striker, that can run out very quickly if you don't land those shots. And then the veterans come in and take over because they know how to cruise to a comfortable decision and outpoint you. There's, a, there's a, a massive experience difference, not only in the amount of fights, but the amount of fight time for Sitachai. Um, one other thing that is, in, is interesting for me in this one as well, because Superbond's fighting Marat Gregorian for the featherweight belt. So that's a rematch. Um, Gregorian stopped him in 29 seconds back in 2018. So we've got the, the, the defending kickboxing featherweight champion, Superbond, defending his belt against someone that stopped him within 30 seconds. So that initially is very interesting. Then the other thing that's worth noting is that both of these guys have got losses to one or both of the people in the main event. So um, Sitachai's only losses in the last five years is a unanimous decision to Superbond 
and uh, to Gregorian. Um, Alazov as a five-round loss to Gregorian. So not only are they looking at their next opponent like, okay, Sitichai is a massive win. For uh, Alazov, it would be payback. Sitichai is working his way through the next guy to get payback from one of the guys in the top and wants that belt because, you know, 30 years old, he's probably looking at maybe another couple of years of competing. He wants that gold around his waist. And this tournament was the ideal way to get to it. And he's looked great so far. You know, beating Typhon Ozcan, beating David Kiria are huge wins on his record. And the way that he did it shows a, an ability to fight moving forward as well as moving backwards. So regardless of how this fight's playing out, we know Sitachai can play both games. On the flip side, you've got Chingiz Alazov, who stopped Sana with a lovely body shot after catching him with the, with the head kick. And then the counter straight left against uh, Joe Natawut. Two big first round finishers. He's the bigger guy. He's the heavier guy. He's going to be coming in expecting to be able to stop Sitichai. And for me, Alazov looks like he's on form at the moment. You know, the, the, I'm sure the previous fight against Sitichai seems so much, so far away in his own mind that this is almost a, it's almost like Sitichai doesn't know who he is. That's kind of how I'd be feeling if I was Alazov going into this. And the form that he's shown in this tournament so far, the way that he's ran through his last two opponents, you've got to think if he lands the right shots on Sitachai, if he starts confident in the first round and puts it on him, we might see another first round finish. And then you've got him moving into the uh, moving into the championship fight with the, the winner of Superbon and Marat, Marat Gregorian. I mean, one championship are doing fantastic things with their kickboxing divisions at the moment. The the DJ Rod Tang fight is going to be great. If you've not watched the the uh, the war room on that, make sure you do. Um, but just make sure you tune in for this card. March 26, 1X. Um, Stamp Fairtex is on the card against Angela Lee. We've got uh, rematches going on. So he hams rematching um, Denise Zamboanga. Great, great card. And for me, this kickboxing tournament has been one of the best that I've ever witnessed. One of the best all-round uh, um, um, tournaments, Grand Prix. And we've had 10 contestants as well as the guys fighting for the belt as well. So these storylines for days. I'm very excited to see this one. I think it's going to be a really, really interesting one. And, and I just, I'm leaning towards Alazov just because I think he's looked devastating in his last few fights. But I've been wrong halfway through this tournament. Half of the amount of the things I've said about this tournament, I've been wrong. These guys are surprising me every time. Every time. So I'll be looking forward to uh, being surprised once again. Make sure you catch it, and I'll see you next time. 